everybody. How you guys doing today? This is Big T coming at you with another cigar review. Today we are going to be reviewing the Camacho Corojo. Uh, so this particular one is the Robusto size. Um, picked it up. These are supposed to be one of the quote unquote world's strongest cigars. World's strongest cigars. So we'll see how well that holds water. A um, little bit of homework for you guys. Um, so Cigar.com says, quote, One of the strongest cigars in the world, boasting a complex blend of rich Honduran tobaccos from a rare seed smuggled out of Cuba after the embargo. Um, so the big hype about Camacho cigars is that they've been able to take the conditions that you would typically find in Cuba, which is where this whole thing started, um, and kind of recreate them in a new area in Honduras, um, along with combining the original seed, as that said, smuggled out before the embargo from Cuba. Um, so a lot of seeds that you get with a lot of tobaccos, it's not the original Cuban tobacco seed. Um, so that's one thing that Camacho seems to have a leg up on the competition with. Uh, whether or not that's hype, that's up for discussion. But um, So this is supposed to be a full body, full flavor cigar, so we'll see how well that goes. Um, they do a new run of these every year, so it's an annual run, um, and it is a limited run. So getting down towards the end of the year, these little puppies might be a little harder to find. Um, so word of warning on that. Um, and then from Cigars International, we got a little more information. So the wrapper is a fifth priming Corojo wrapper. Um, it's got a nice, dark, slightly oil sheen to it there. Few little small veins, some nice little fine veins in there. Um, can't really tell a whole lot of where the seams are. There is one spot right up here by the, sorry, right up here by the cap where you can kind of see the seam. It's got a nice little triple cap on it. Um, standard Camacho band, red, black lettering. Um, it says infamous since 1962. Um, so given the fact that the definition for infamous is something along the lines of bad quality or hold on let me check my notes i wrote it down because i knew i was going to forget it uh definition of infamous well known for some bad quality or deed otherwise known as wicked or abominable i don't know if they chose that saying just because it sounded cool um Unless this cigar just turns to utter crap, then maybe that's correct. But uh, I've only ever had one Camacho before. Um, Camacho, the brand Camacho. I, I'm sure I've had other cigars from that family of uh, blenders before. But, uh, and I believe it was a Connecticut or a Shade, something along those lines. Um, not too bad, if I remember correctly. It does have a slight box press on the tip i don't know if that's just from being packed in the box more than likely um the rest of it's nice and round um so according to cigar international it got a 90 rating um it says smooth classic well aged and well constructed um so definitely from the looks looks very well constructed um we'll see how it goes uh and as far as the aging we'll be able to tell that too once we get it lit up so Without further ado, let's get her cut, lit, and we will start this journey together. Hopefully everybody's having a good day. Today has been an exhausting day for yours truly. Got woken up by the cat today. Apparently he thought his food bowl was too empty. I don't know how that could be. He's a nice fat cat. He's about 16 pounds, so if anything, he could... Have a little more patience. <laughs> so as usual, just clipped a little bit off the tip there. Just enough to break that cap open. Um, looks like the tobacco's pretty well packed. Medium draw, not too firm, not too light. That's about right where I like it. I'm really just getting... Sweet, musty tobacco, which is basically the same thing I got on the smell for the wrapper and the foot. So, uh, sweet, musty tobacco. 
Kind of sounds like a Corojo. Uh-huh. It is a Corojo. Um, so like we were saying, uh, fifth priming Corojo wrapper. Um, obviously Corojo binder. And then there's three different primings of Corojo filler packed into this bad boy. Pretty firm to the touch. Slightly spongy at the foot, of course. No pepper or anything on the lips, so uh, I suppose we'll get her lit up and see how she goes. Out in the garage today, got the door shut. A little chilly here in Michigan. Sun's kind of poking in and out, but uh, we're sitting right around 8 o'clock p.m. out here at this time, so sun is setting. Starting to get a little cool. Tomorrow's supposed to be nice. Going to go hang out with some friends, even though we're on quarantine. Don't tell nobody. Go hang out with some friends. Do a little grilling. Maybe throw some steel. Who knows? Very excited. I got some things in motion. Uh, my last video, I think I had mentioned about... Uh, some possible upgrades to the old man cave slash studio. More to come on that. I think I got a real good light on that one, guys. Classic Corojo flavors right up front. A nice earthy tobacco. Slight black pepper tinge. Or maybe it's a red pepper tinge. I would say... Definitely red pepper. Slight cayenne pepper tinge on the uh, nasal passages for the retro. Nice, uh, light, earthy uh, tobacco notes in there. And a slight zing. Can't really put my finger on what kind of flavor that is at the moment, but... Uh, so far, so good. So this comes in a variety of sizes. Um, the Churchill, which is a 7x48, runs uh, 162, 162. These are all boxes of 20, by the way. So the Churchill, 7x48, 162 for a box of 20. Uh, the Gigante, 6.5x54, that's $171 for a box of 20. Um, the Gordo, which is a 6x60, classic shape. $171 for a box of 20. The Robusto, which is what we have here today, the 5x50, that is $148.50 for a box of 20. Not too bad. Uh, the Robusto Tubo, which is obviously same size, 5x50, just comes in a fancy little tube. Um, $148.50 for a box of 20. Or no, sorry, $153 for a box of 20. Uh, so you're paying a little bit more. And uh, I have a feeling you're paying for the packaging on that one. Which the packaging is nice, but uh, I can't smoke the packaging. So um, that's where I would personally go with the next size up, which is the Toro, which is the 6x50. Like I've said before, that's my favorite size. Um, for the same price of $153 for a box of 20, it'd give you about an inch more than what I got here today. And uh, no annoying little tube to kind of hold on to. So that's probably what I would go for. So the bigger sizes, you're looking around $8 to $9 a stick. Um, the smaller sizes, you're looking about $7 to $8 per stick. So average, $8 a stick. There's a slight little zingy note in there that I just can't put my finger on. These also come in, apparently they have Camacho Mojitos Corojo Cigarillos. Um, so small cigarillos, kind of like what you see in my mini-series. Um, if you haven't checked that out, I believe I started a playlist for those. Uh, hopefully it's working okay. Um, so the little cigarillos, little tiny ones, um, 
which is a four by 32. So imagine 32 ring gauge, this is a 50 ring gauge, 32, Cigarillo, um, which is $89.99 for a uh, container of 30. I don't know if they come in a box or if they come, a lot of them come in tins, um, but for you to pack 30 of them in there, it's gotta be a decent sized tin. Um, Cause I know the Macanuda Inspirados come in tins of 20. Excuse me, um, but I don't know the actual size on the Mac Nudo, so these could be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, who knows. It's got good smoke output. Seems to be burning okay. Um, I've got one side that's starting to go a little bit faster than the other, but uh, See if we can get it caught up or not. If not, I'm gonna have to touch it up a little bit. So far, so good, guys. Hmm. Let's smoke on this a little bit. See if I can figure out what that zingy note is. I'll be back. Hold tight. All right, guys, so we are into this first third here on the Camacho Corojo. Um, so far, so good. Um, we've got that light, earthy tobacco, um, that slight zinging, that slight zingy note that I'm picking up. Um, kind of reminds me of something like a medicinal note. Um, something else it could be is almost like a, it's almost like a toasted cedar or like a toasted wood. Whenever I think cedar in terms of wood, I think sweet for some reason. Um, cedar tends to have a little bit of a sweeter taste coming through the cigar. Uh, I've also experienced like oak in a cigar, which is more of like a dry wood kind of flavor. Um, so something about the cedar note to me in most cigars um, gives off a little bit of like a sweetness. And then there's usually like, it's kind of hard to explain, um, but the difference between regular cedar and like toasted cedar. Um, so for this cigar, I'm gonna call it toasted cedar. Ooh. On that inhale there, I almost picked up like a hint of cinnamon too. That was interesting. Um, so almost like a toasted cedar and the toastedness is kind of like a, like a smoky kind of flavor. Um, so I think that combined with the cedar note, that's where I'm getting the toasted cedar kind of thing. Um, the, uh, the cayenne pepper tinge on the nostrils um, has gone away um, and we're left with just a, the slightest, the ever so slightest little bit of a pepper on the back of your tongue. Nothing overbearing, um, nothing like super pronounced, but this is definitely Corojo tobacco. Um, when I think Corojo, this is what I think of. I don't know if you guys can get the peanut gallery out there or not, but little neighborhood neighborhood kids are running around causing all kinds of havoc today. So another good reason to have the door shut. I'm going to go ahead and pull the band off. As you can see, it, it slides around pretty good. So we're just going to go ahead and pull that off. Um, that's going to help me eliminate any kind of damage I might get from the, um, or on the wrapper rather. No discoloration on the wrapper from where that's been. Um, so given that we're only, what? four months going on five months into the year um this is more than likely this year's run it's not an old one um set that aside for later actually i'll kind of give you guys a look at that real quick uh see if i can get it undone there we go standard camacho band kind of like the black on red it's pretty sharp little scorpion and then of course infamous since 1962 does have the scorpion logo on the back as well kind of cool i did uh complete another project today with cigar bands um for those of you who don't know i save all my cigar bands and do certain little projects with them um i actually made a phone case so which is on the phone which is what i'm recording myself with right now so 
Be patient. I'll show you. Hold on. Man, they are being loud today. Man, them kids are rough and rowdy today. I'm glad they're not my kids. So this is the phone case I made. Obviously, the cutout for the uh, cameras and whatnot. You can see a little bit of tape kind of hanging there. I kind of used that to hold the bands in while I was trying to stick them together. But uh, Rocky Patel on top, a little bit of CAO. We got uh, Alec Bradley in there, the Charger Oak, some My Father. Um, this is a St. Louis Ray, the SLR. This one here is one of my very favorite cigars uh, from Daruma 101. That's from the Nappy B. Um, some more My Father Ahoyo, and then uh, Oscar Valadares over yonder. So I just get a clear plastic cell phone case, kind of lay my bands in there. I usually start at the top, um, try to frame in that window a little bit the best I can, and then from there on out, it's just more of like a collage type of thing. Kind of a neat little, uh, neat little project or whatever. Something to kind of keep you busy during this quarantine time. Still in quarantine lockdown here in Michigan. Governor's made it, uh, what's the word I want to put? Mandated? that uh, you wear a mask in uh, any public confined space. However, there is no penalty for it. So to me, that still means optional. Although I have been wearing my mask when I go to the grocery store. So um, I am an O blood type, I believe. And therefore I technically could be considered asymptomatic. So I don't want to get anybody else sick. Not that I do have it, but just in the off chance that I do, I'm taking the necessary precautions. One thing that I have learned during this quarantine time, I have found, I have a newfound respect for my wife, whom until recently was a stay-at-home mom. I don't know how she did it that long, because now daddy's a stay-at-home dad, and mommy's out working, and I'm telling you what, man, these kids are driving me nuts. Gotta keep them occupied. So this cigar is pretty good so far. The main notes right now is that toasted cedar, that slight that slight zing, that medicinal zing kind of on the finish. Um, and then it's kind of leaving, uh, not necessarily a black pepper, but like an earthy pepper kind of finish on the tongue. It is kind of a dry smoke. Um, so I'm gonna grab a libation. Today, as most days, once season comes around, we will be drinking Oberon, Oberon, my nice little koozie, my buddy Justin made me, shout out to Justin, and remember folks, the koozie isn't to keep the beer cold, it's to keep your hand from freezing. <laughs> I think I've said it before, but Oberon is my favorite beer, hands down favorite beer. And I think what contributes a lot to that is the fact that the, the, the brew changes every year. Um, last year it was very malty, this year it's a little more clean and crisp, so. I don't know if you can see that. My ash is starting to do one of these numbers. Um, so it might be coming off here soon. As you can see, we got a little bit of an uneven burn going. I think I'm going to go ahead and touch that up. Um, it was a little uneven earlier. It managed to touch itself up. Um, but now, now, honestly, I can't type if that's the same side that was burning wonky earlier or not. But we're going to go ahead and touch that up. When I touch it up, you can see where I just touched it with the flame. I'm not heating up the entire wrapper, just going along the edge of that ash, just to give it a little more heat, help catch it up a little bit. That way when you take your draw, it 
it'll speed that side up just a little bit. And for that, I just use my nice little Firebird, my little single jet. Works great for touching up cigars, as well as other things. So. So the mascara line on this started out slightly medium-ish, right, at the beginning. Now it's starting to get to a finer line. So what that tells me is that they weren't lying about this wrapper being a high priming tobacco leaf. That tells me that it's a higher primer. And what that also tells me is that the age on the or the age on the tobacco rather is good age. Um, now the ash, on the other hand, kind of like a dark gray ash. Um, typically with higher priming and or uh, longer aged tobacco, you see a more of a white ash. Nonetheless, still a good cigar. Definitely something I'll probably buy again. Let me go back and look. It just says three primings for the filler. So it doesn't necessarily say what um, or how long it's been aged. Um, but that thinner mascara line definitely tells me that it's higher primer. And then on top of that, there is no shoe shine to be seen anywhere on this wrapper. So the color that you're getting, this nice dark, kind of rich and oily, natural look. I know the lighting's crappy, guys. I'm sorry. That nice dark wrapper. Not quite uh, Oscuro by any means or like a Maduro wrapper, but just that really nice dark oily brown Kind of like a milk chocolate natural wrapper type of color. Um, that is the true color of the leaf, which is nice. Very nice. This is definitely what I would expect from a Corojo. Well, we're going to keep smoking on for a little bit. Um, something I have noticed with this uh, video editing software that I've been using um, sometimes when I'm adjusting my start and stop times on a certain um, piece of footage, it likes to jank it up a little bit. Um, so from here on out, I've decided I'm just going to leave in, you know, the whole hand reach motion and all that. We'll leave all that in because what I'm finding going back and looking through my videos, there's been a couple of things that have either been cut out or stuff that started or stopped where it shouldn't have. So better quality, very better quality video for you guys for the time being um you're just gonna have to deal with the whole you know hand motion but whatever not a big deal something else i'm looking into better better software we're working on it guys just give me time the strength on this one I would say mild to medium right now, um, but it's definitely building. Um, you can kind of feel it. Um, some people call it that nicotine rush kind of deal. Um, not really a nicotine rush, um, just kind of gives you that warm fuzzy, you know, good stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to keep smoking on this. I'll be back. Hold tight. All right, guys, we are back. Um, so we're about halfway through this. Camacho Corojo. Still going fairly well. Um, had to touch it up once, like you saw earlier. Um, I believe it's that same side. It's starting to get a little wonky on me again, so we might touch it up here in just a minute. Um, that, first at, that first ash drop was about an inch and a half, maybe two inches in. Um, although the uh, ash is, looks uh, kind of flaky, it's actually pretty solid, so that's a plus. Um, it's burning very well, other than you know, the running issue, but we can fix that. Um, so the flavor has kind of transitioned a little bit. Um, so we had like that light, um, I called it a light earthy tobacco earlier. The earthiness um, is starting to settle in a little bit, so you get that deeper earth tone to it. Um, the slight medicinal zing has kind of faded away a little bit. Um, 
that sharp uh, retro pepper, that's long gone. Um, still kind of got that toasted cedar note in there. Um, but nothing else is really jumping out at me at the moment. Still got excellent smoke output, no issues there. Um, I've set it down a couple times in the ashtray, picked it up, no issues with it stopping, um, anything like that. I just wish it would burn a little more evenly, and that might be my fault too. I'm not going to put that all on the cigar. That could be, I don't know, something minute that I did during the burn, or the initial light rather. Could be something that I just didn't do. I didn't get that side toasted good enough or what have you. No matter to me, that's why I keep the Firebird handy, just in case I need to touch something up. Whatever. The strength on this one is definitely in the higher range, though. Um, we're definitely on a full medium now. Um, I think medium, right? Medium comes after mild. Something like that. Anyway, this is definitely not like a powerhouse stick by any means, um, but it's definitely up there. So I would suggest having this one like I am now after dinner, um, after you have a good solid meal. Um, we had ribs and taters, so that's definitely a good solid meal in my book. Um, definitely going to want a beverage. It is kind of a dry smoke, um, so make sure you have a libation on hand. Have not had to do any draw holes, haven't had to do a purge or recut. We're still working with the same cut, so that's a good thing. The draw on this stick is just excellent. I can't get over that. It's been a while since I've had a stick that had a decent draw like this one. Um, so not much to report on the flavor notes, um, although for me, I don't know if it's something to do with my just my palate in particular or my nose or what, but... A lot of cigars, that's basically what I get. I get the earthy notes and I get the, the wood notes, um, the pepper, the spice. Um, I did write down that I had that fleeting tone or hint rather of that cinnamon or like a baking spice earlier, but that's gone now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a solid stick, that's for sure. Um, I feel like this might be one where if you get it in a bigger size, um, a bigger ring gauge, so if you went with like the Gordo or the Gigante, um, where you're looking at, you know, a 60 ring gauge, um, 54 ring gauge even, I found that um, with some cigars, if you smoke like a Robusto size and then you go up to that larger ring gauge, um, it offers a, a wider uh, flavor profile, so that might be something we look at. The good news is that it sounds quieter outside, so I think all the kids have moseyed on in. Uh, looks like we're hitting around quarter after nine, so that's good. That's something we can't forget about these days, guys, even though the uh, quarantine's going on. Sat down with my three-year-old uh, the other day and tried to explain to her why she's not allowed to go to the grocery store with Daddy anymore. Um, tried to explain that there might be sick people and I didn't want her to get sick. Um... I know they say that younger kids don't get the symptoms as bad, but I'd rather not take any chances. Um, along with this, this whole thing is just strange as far as viruses go. It can transmit, and one person who might be the host is god-awful on their deathbed. They transfer it to somebody else, they're fine as rain, no symptoms, and then they transfer it to somebody else, and that person gets really sick, so I'd just rather not take any chances. That was kind of a hard conversation. She's only three. She's very smart for her age. At least I feel she is. Um, didn't quite grasp it, though. That was one of our things that we always did was uh, grocery shopping. Little Emma always get to go grocery shopping with Daddy. That was our, our time. So I've had to replace that with other things. Um, blocks and toys and activities and whatnot. Um, <laughs> she keeps asking to go to the park, but we're in the same situation there. I'd, I'd rather not her touch surfaces either so it can be hard um so hopefully all you parents out there are not running out of ideas yet um i got a few tricks at my sleeve so all right smoke on this a little bit more guys and uh we'll see how the end turns out
All right, guys, so we are definitely in that last third. It's actually starting to get a little hot. Um, not on my fingers, but on my lips. We're going to go ahead and put that down. As you can see, that burn tends to, uh, or continues rather, to be a little bit of a nuisance. But, you know, what are you going to do? So the Camacho Corojo, um, that final third, basically just looking at those solid earthy tobacco notes, as well as a slight uh, toasted cedar in there yet. Had a little fleeting hint of like some toasted almond in there. Um, and then that slight pepper on the retro did come back for a little while. Um, so what that kind of tells me, being that we had the retro, uh, the slight pepper rather, on the retro up front and towards the end, got a little bit more Lajero on either end of the stick. Made for a nice uh, start and finish. So definitely has a flawless draw. Um, kudos to Camacho for that one. Um, the burn was a little wonky here and there, but I'm not going to dock too many points for that because... I don't mind touching up my cigars a little bit, as long as it's not a catastrophe. Nothing fell apart. Never had to do uh, a secondary um, cut. Never had to do a purge. Um, so by far, one of the better sticks I've had in a little while. So we'll go ahead and run through the numbers for the price. I'm going to give it a four. Uh, I think we said they're right around seven to eight dollar range. Um, I feel for seven or eight dollars, I got exactly what I expected out of something that should be a very good Corojo. Um, so the price is fair. Construction, I'm going to go ahead and give that a four as well. Um, although we had those uh, the, the touch-ups that we had to do on the burn, um, like I said, I'm not going to dock points for that. It could be something that I did in the lighting process. Who knows? Um, but nothing fell apart. Um, everything stayed intact. It was a good constructed cigar. For the flavor, I'm going to say average. I'm going to give it a three. Um, we did have a couple of notes, you know, the toasted cedar, the almond, um, kind of commingling overall the standard structure of the cigar though are those earthy tobacco tones which is what I expect from a Corojo cigar overall experience I'm gonna give it a four excuse me um, very good cigar paired very well with the uh, Oberon which it's my favorite beer so everything pairs well with Oberon but uh, so that brings us to a 3.75 out of 5 3.75 um, would I smoke it again yeah definitely um, like I said, I would probably pick up a bigger size though the next time. Uh, maybe a Toro if I want to go longer. Otherwise, I might actually try the uh, the Gigante or the Gordo. Get that bigger ring gauge on it. Might get a little bit of a better or a broader profile on the flavor. Um, as far as the um, strength goes, definitely in the upper end of the strength scale. Um, not overwhelming. Um, just enough to kind of get you to that point. You know what I'm saying? So, good cigar. Camacho Corojo. Check it out. It's the red band for the Corojo. Um, yeah, good cigar. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe for more content. Um, I appreciate all my subscribers and anybody who watches these videos. I'm just here to give you the notes, guys. Um, for me, it's a hobby. I just like coming out and smoking them. Um, and then putting these videos together is just a little extra added to that. So hopefully everybody's having a good day. Uh, stay safe out there. Things are getting a little crazy. Hopefully they straighten out soon. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Take care.